Hey guys, so welcome to another Fandom Friday. I've gotten this question at least twice in the last week, so I figured I'd make a video for it so everyone can see. All right, so my friends know me as a cosplayer and I do love my dresses and all my different costumes. But here's the thing, I know that sometimes cosplay, especially when you start, can seem really expensive and also really hard to come by. And as you can see with my new Poison Ivy cosplay, it's going to be gorgeous. And I know not everyone is going to luck out and be able to have a military ball gown just hanging around and then all you have to do is add to it. So here, I think we need a change. Much better. So this is a very classic Hogwarts student uniform. I don't have a hood yet. That is one of the things you either need to make or buy and I just haven't gotten around to it. They are on Amazon so they're pretty easy to find. The rest of this is actually all found pieces. So the tie I found at a reuse it, it was a yellow tie that I used a Sharpie on for black lines, being the good huff of huff that I am. The little simple thing I actually got from a friend of mine. She found it somewhere online. So again, most of the actual things that make it Hogwarts can be found online or th places like Hot Topic that are very easy to find. Though I have found that Gryffindor and Hufflepuff are really hard to find. I don't know why. They always seem to have Ravenclaw and Slytherin. Must be something about the popular characters right now. Now this is a very easy one because it is simply a white collar shirt and black pants and a gray sweater. So it's nice and easy, it's very recognizable, and especially if you have the hood, it's really just something that you can find going to the reuse it, or even just the regular clothing store. So this is something you can put together with stuff you already have, and of course it's just the accents that make it anything. So, we have our Hufflepuff scarf, and we have our wand, I don't know how they're going to carry their wand. And one of the things that I was really excited about was one last thing that I found it. My friends were not nearly as excited about my radish earrings, but I found radish earrings at the reuse it. And oh my lanta, does it make it all the better to have that one little extra thing that makes it that only real fans would know and people get super excited when you see it. So this is this one. How about we try something like the Renaissance Fair? All right, so the first piece that I have for my Renaissance costume is my blouse. Now this is one I did make. I found a pattern for it, I believe at one of just a local fabric store. It is definitely a pirate blouse. It was actually very easy and it's actually, I think it's three pieces. So it's something that a simple sewer could do. The edging's a little bit harder, but it's probably something that I made harder on myself than really needs to be. So if you follow the pattern, it is a very simple one, especially if you know how to sew. So this is something I've had for probably nearly 15 years now, and you can see it's actually hold, held up very well throughout the years. It goes to my Belle cosplay, it goes to my Renaissance Fair costume, it goes to a number of things that I use, because it is a very classic, easy piece that goes with almost everything. Now the next piece is my bodice. I don't have it fully laced because, as you know, dress forms are kind of different than putting things on yourself. So my dress form is a little bit fatter than I am. It's kind of cool. But this is a found piece. This is something that I actually found at a reuse it. I think it was part of like one of those um, mother of the bride kind of dresses. So it had a skirt that went with it, but I couldn't find it. It does make a very nice bodice for the rest of my Ren Faire costume. Now the fun thing about finding things at reuse it's or Goodwills or those kind of places is they are usually much cheaper than going out and buying them at a store. Of course, you could find a top like this at any store, but what do you want to pay for it? Now the next thing is my skirt. Good peasant girl, I have a skirt. This is another found one that I found at the Reuse It, but I have seen these in malls and various other places. You know the place that always smells like patchouli? They have lots of these. However, they are generally about $45. So when you find them at the Reuse It, they're only about five, which is kind of nice. This is a green one, and I purposely matched it to some of the colors in the bodice. So when you're thinking about your costume, think about the overall colors you want to add to it. See, if you stay in the same color scheme, it looks like you bought it instead of trying to create it. Now I do have a summer skirt and a winter skirt because our run fair runs August to like October. So depending on where you live and what the temperature is, be prepared to be cold in garb. 
So it's better to always have some warm stuff just in case, you know, the week you decide to go is the last week in October, which up here could mean snow. So this is my winter one. It's actually one that I've made and it's a simple circle skirt. Basically you end up with this giant circle, which you then just have to cut the waist out of. Now I added a waistband just for simplicity sake because this is a very heavy fabric. It's actually a corduroy, but this has saved me through many, many Ren fairs. And as you guys can probably see or not see, the summer skirt can go under so it has the bottom patchwork tail. Now, of course, there's always one more thing you need at the Renaissance Fair. And that is a decent cloak because everyone knows you need to be cold and there were no such thing as coats. So this was made very similarly to the skirt. It's actually in the same fabric and I lined it. So it's been interesting trying to match this with the bodice, which I got later, but you guys can see it actually kind of goes pattern to pattern and staying in that sort of brown pink family. One more thing for summer. All right, so the last thing for my summer is a bonnet. Our run fair is outside, I'm sure many of them are, and is always in direct sunlight, which for those of us that are Irish do not does not work. So this is a hat I actually got back from China when I went to China. So obviously you don't have to go all the way to China to get a straw hat, but straw hats were very common in the time period. Now it simply has ribbon. Honestly, I believe it's safety pinned on still, so it's not even fully done and just the fake flowers that go with the bodice again. So like I said, stay in the same color family. It looks amazing. Now this is my Renaissance Fair costume. It can also be used for Hobbit costumes as it does look like the Hobbits and many other ones too. So it is very versatile, so it's kind of nice. And of course, the more pieces you get, the more you can look like an everyday person because not everyone wears the same clothes all the time. Let's go to Belle. And we're back to our white blouse because that is the beginning. This is our Bell cosplay, or at least my Bell cosplay. Um, this is from the new movie. So obviously it's a little bit harder to play an animated character, though I have seen it done very well. I was really intrigued by the Bell from the new movie because it's just a lot of fun and stuff you can find. So again, we start with my Renfair costume because it's about the same period actually, which is kind of nice. However, we do have to go blue. So let us make it blue. All right, so our second piece of our Belle cosplay is this gorgeous boho skirt. I love boho skirts and they're just so useful for so many things. Now this one has a wonderful ombre print so it goes light to dark and it has lots and lots of ruffles, which is kind of seen in this movie. The reason I actually use this one is I use it as the underskirt as you'll see in a minute because if you look at her skirts, her skirts are full. This was the time period of lots and lots of petticoats. So this kind of helps with the petticoat and you'll see the next step. So now we have our overskirt, which is actually also an ombre, and I've had this for whole oh, since high school. So this is another piece I found at the Reuse It. I actually went to the Reuse It a lot with my mom. Still do every time she comes. We go to the Reuse It and we check out things. So this skirt has lasted me, oh, 20 years now. <laughs> so this one's also fun. You can see that it's very, very light and flimsy. And what you do is you literally take about halfway down the skirt and you wedge it up with a safety pin and then you get those folds that you see in her skirt. So it's kind of pocketed and really cool. So this obviously is not complete. Let us find the next piece. This is one of my corsets I have. It's one of my favorites. Um, it works really well with the costume. It doesn't fit on the <laughs> dummy, sadly. Now, this is one that I actually got at a con. And here's the thing I have about corsets. I've tried buying two on Amazon and the measurements just aren't quite right. I have one that I love, but it doesn't fit quite right. If you want a corset, especially for cosplay, they can actually be very comfortable and very easy to move in. You will eat a little less, but you will be able to breathe better and walk around and learn how to sit in them. They're actually quite comfortable. You want ones with real boning. And for those that you don't know, these dark lines actually have metal or hard plastic in them to keep your shape. Now, this is both useful and kind of hurtful when you don't know what you're doing. You have to be very careful not to lace yourself too tight. The problem is that if it's not sized well, it will hurt like crap. And so for those of you that are trying, you can buy them online if you want to. I have had no luck whatsoever, and I've gotten two now where I've had to return them to Amazon, which is sad because they were gorgeous and I would have loved them. Now I am personally waiting till my next con to get another one of these because I know a retailer at the dealer shop that sells gorgeous ones for 20 bucks. Now you guys are probably saying, well, I could just go to Victoria's Secret. Yes, you can, 
they are 50 bucks. If you go to places like Hot Topic, I did go recently, they don't have the ones with the actual boning and actual fabric. So what you're dealing with is stretchy material. Yes, they're cute, but they will not hold up and they won't be worth it. Sometimes with cosplay, you need to spend a little bit more to make it worth your while or you're gonna be buying one every year. Now the other thing is the Renaissance Fair does have retailers too. So you can go to the shops. Sometimes they are not worth the money depending on how good your sewing skills are. So it all kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. But corsets are one of those ones you should probably be able to try on and you need to make sure they fit well and are laced correctly. Now the last thing in my Belle cosplay that I was super excited to find was actually in an antique store. So this is again one of those ones that's a little bit pricier but was totally worth it. And you could make do with less, but honestly, it's just so pretty. So this is an antique apron. It actually has a pocket and the lace, excuse me, the pocket and the lace on the bottom. So it looks much more in costume than regular. Now I live in Amish country, so it's very easy to find things with lace and doilies and aprons and that kind of thing. So it's a little bit easier for Renaissance Fair and those kind of t period costumes. Now, as with everything, try to mimic the character you're going for as much as possible, unless you're making it up like with the Renaissance Fair. In that case, you have time periods to go for. So it kind of depends on what you want to do, what colors you can find, and what you're actually looking for. Now, am I saying you have to go cosplay with found items? Of course not. I personally was drooling on Amazon recently when I looked at some of the Ren Faire costumes. However, I do not want to spend slash do not have 75 to $90 for a cosplay dress. So it's kind of up to you what you want to spend. I'm just finding you alternatives. Now, obviously, the corset is wrong. It does not fit on it, but this is as close as I could get. And as per all costumes, it's all in the details. Works really well with the character, even if you can't see it and you can barely recognize it. It is one of those things that will be easily recognizable. The same with the towel which was something I added. It just needs to be in color and it needs to be close enough because she did have things on her. The other things you can add is a loaf of bread. You can either make one or bring one. Cons are places where we need to eat. But what are some other ones? Every bell needs a rose. And luckily these are pretty easy. This is one I found at Walmart of all places and it was only three bucks. So it's not expensive and doesn't have to be. The next thing is a book. Belle was always seen with a book, even in the new movie. Now, if you have hardback books, take the dust cover off because they don't look realistic. Dust covers did not happen. But any book, even recent ones, can be visually seen as nice classic books. And the last thing every Belle needs is a basket. It's nice and easy. I found this one at a reuse it you can find them all over there's plenty of people that use them for like flower decorations and then never use them again and again it's all in the little details i get recognized all the time like i said i do minnie mouse i do bell i've done a lot of disney princesses i'm really hoping to get the yellow dress and i have gone in the middle of cities in these costumes and i get recognized all the time as the princess Smile, wave, say hi. That's all you really need to do. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Yes, it's a little kid, but let them be excited too. You are growing the next generation of geeks. And just because you are willing to go out in public looking like this and getting all those stares from the adults, you are raising in those kids the idea that this could be normal and this could be something they are super excited about. One more thing. My last piece of advice, if especially if you're going to Comic-Con, is dress what you want to dress like even if people don't know the character this is one of my favorite cosplays that I spent a lot of time on and almost didn't show you guys because I know there's very few bride coats out there but for those of you that do love Firefly and Serenity you'll know exactly who this is see that's the thing it is your fandom and it is your choice what you want to do so I actually spent a lot of time on this finding the shirts that go with it because they are not commonly found it's hard to find the sort of artsy style that comes in Firefly, especially when you go as Kaylee. And this took me a while too. It is actually a flight suit that I found at a reuse it while my husband was in the army. So I was able to cut it down. It is huge on me, so it doesn't look quite like Kaylee, but it does work. And I even did all the different patches on it so you can see her flower. 
which I spent a lot of time recreating her teddy bear, which is just fabric and stitching. So it can be done with time and work. I even took some time and took a Sharpie and wrote all the patterns in that are supposed to be on it that you can see on her costume. It's also very easy to adapt. Kaylee is a bright, colorful, cheerful person, and the one thing she always has is her umbrella. Now, I don't have the spiral umbrella that's from the show, but I do love collecting these really rustly paper umbrellas. So mine is blue, and I think Kaylee would approve too. Mechanics are easy, and honestly, this costume's fun because I could always take it downstairs to my husband and get real car grease on it so that it looks more authentic. Pick characters that you know and you love and you know are like you. Because for me, cosplay is always expressing part of my personality. So it's nice and easy to find something that's like me or at least part of me that I can play along with. And of course, it's always nice to be seen and said hello. If you guys ever see me out in public, by all means, stop and say hi. Goodness knows, hi, Mom. She sees me on a regular basis. Um, but here's the thing. Cosplay doesn't have to be hard. Cosplay doesn't have to be expensive, and I hope that helps all of you who have been asking me questions about Ren Faire and costumes and how much that should cost and how easy it is. Alrighty, guys, that's all I have for you this week. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, invite people to watch videos. Hopefully this helps you all, and I will see you guys next Fandom Friday. Bye.